Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51 Centre show about women reshaping our world. Coming up, we head to El Salvador, which bans abortion in all cases and where terminating a pregnancy can send a woman to prison for up to eight years. Also, why the Japanese sushi chef has traditionally been a man and the women who are working hard to change that. And we meet Haitian-Canadian singer, songwriter and guitarist Melissa Laveau, whose latest album celebrates strong women. But we begin in El Salvador, which has one of the toughest abortion laws in the world. Women can be jailed for having a termination, even if their lives are at risk or they are victims of rape. But the Inter-American Court of Human Rights has ordered the country to reform its draconian policies on reproductive health. Our team on the ground sent us this report. Karen's pregnancy turned into a nightmare. She was only 21 and was expecting her second child when she passed out at home. When I woke up, I was handcuffed to a stretcher and surrounded by policemen. They were saying, why did you do that? They were accusing me. I could only answer, what happened? Where is my baby? She was taken directly from hospital to prison, where she served seven of the 30 years of her sentence before being released last December. During her trial, doctors and a policeman accused her of having an abortion. El Salvador has the most restrictive laws in the world against abortion. It is prohibited under any circumstances, even in case of non-viable pregnancy or if the mother's health is in danger. Doctors and nurses bear a huge pressure to comply with the law, in disregard of medical secrecy. And suddenly the media arrive in front of the hospital because a teenager had a miscarriage in her high school. When she arrives, my priority is obviously to take care of her and make sure she doesn't die. But the media and society point their finger at her without even knowing what happened or if she was raped. This gynecologist cannot speak freely for fear of being fired. And then the police show up, and as medics, we don't know how to react. They tell us, you must collaborate, you must tell us everything, you must file a complaint. And if we are not well informed and aware of our rights, we easily give in to this pressure. But even in this very religious country, mentalities are changing. Thanks to the work of this association, 62 women condemned for abortion have been released. For the Salvadoran law, one is considered a person from the moment of conception. So women are not criminalized for abortion, but for homicide with aggravating circumstances. And how do they justify it? Only by doing a DNA test on the fetus or the baby. And they say, you see, it was the mother who killed her baby. It's infanticide. It's an aggravating circumstance. And they receive 30-year prison sentences. A judgment of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights has just condemned the Salvadoran state for violating women's health rights. This historic step could set a precedent, so that Salvadoran women who experience an obstetric emergency can be treated instead of being judged. Now, in Tokyo, the fine art of making sushi has been traditionally done by men, thanks to myths such as how a woman's menstrual cycle could affect their sense of taste. But as our France 24 team discovers, a small number of female chefs are moving into the kitchen and dismantling stereotypes in the process. Yuki Chizui is a pioneer. She's the first woman in Japan to manage her own sushi restaurant. With her all-female crew, she's achieved rare success in a sector long dominated by men. At the fish market, the sellers sometimes gave me funny looks, and there have been some negative remarks. I could see in their eyes that they were thinking, what is she doing here? It was like I was an alien. That was difficult for me. Some believe that women make inferior sushi because their menstrual cycle affects their sense of taste, and because their higher core body temperature adversely affects fresh ingredients. Chizui is having none of it. A lot of men in the restaurant industry smoke. I think that's more of a problem. Even today, just one in every hundred restaurants serving Japanese cuisine is owned by a woman. 
But at this culinary school near the old fish market in Tokyo's Tsukiji neighborhood, almost a third of the students are women. Men easily tire of performing certain tasks, but women are often more focused, more tenacious. <laughs> 25-year-old Yui Kasanagi hopes to see change in the restaurant industry. She had to quit her job at a restaurant, where she put in 14-hour shifts after she became pregnant. I had no other choice but to quit. And that's a shame. I hope things improve, so there are no longer any barriers between men and women. Like other parts of Japan's economy, sushi restaurants are being propped up by older men. Now, though, the time has come for women to breathe new life into this highly symbolic cuisine. And time for a change of note. Melissa Lavo is a Canadian Haitian singer, songwriter and guitarist. She spent her formative years in Ottawa, but is now based in Paris. The indie music phenomenon has a new release entitled Mama Forgot Her Name Was Miracle. And better still, she's here in the studio with me and with a guitar. Melissa, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we're going to take a look at one of your songs, that is Lilith, so let's just take a listen. Melissa, that's a incredibly difficult story about a mother whose daughter is raped and she is, of course, now seeking revenge. The lyrics are partly in English and Haitian Creole. Why? Um, I felt it, I had heard so many stories of women in my family who'd been sexually assaulted and who were blamed for their assaults. And so I, I kind of wanted to rewrite a story in honour of them um, because... I think it was I was just tired of hearing this repeated story for different people and in writing the the song I figured that it would be uh, giving honor to the survivors but also giving honor to the, the mothers who had to make a difficult choice to hold a community down and we don't know in what circumstances um, the mothers who blame their children um, made those decisions. Um, and so I wanted to give uh, them a second chance in song. In that song, obviously, it's about women with incredible strength. And that is very much the theme of your latest album. Tell me more about some of the individuals that are featured in your songs. Well, we could start with Harriet Tubman, who freed thousands of slaves, um, even though she was elderly. She um, had seizures uh, uh, because she ended up being a military strategist, being a nurse, um, and always repeating, my people are free. Even though people, people, nobody was free. Everybody was born into slavery and then, and lived to, to see their children be slaves. So she had amazing foresight, but also um, amazing cunning. Uh, and um, she could have been a general. <laughs> But she was a slave. You've spoken in the past, Melissa, about the lack of uh, representation of black women in the rock music industry here in France. I'm curious to know, how does France compare to Canada? Well, in Canada, I'm not alone. <laughs> and I was part of a community of punk and folk and blues artists. Um, and so it was very diverse because you'd, you'd see every, from people from all over. And I had a pretty diverse group of friends when I was in Canada, just as I have here. But here, the difference is that you don't necessarily see these artists being signed. So there are definitely women in punk and women in rock, a few, much less than in North America that I could see, but they aren't getting signed by labels, which makes sense why I created my own imprint um, to release my own music <laughs> the way I wanted it to sound. So that makes sense. So what does that mean when you don't have that diversity in music? Well, it means that little girls come up to me at shows and give me drawings of, of me with my guitar saying, saying, tell me how happy they are 
So, and not just little black girls, but all over. Um, and I remember one of my first shows I was playing in Mexico and I, getting one of these drawings was so moving. And I realized, oh, she can see herself. If she sees me, she can see herself doing the same job. And she sees that it's a cool job and I'm having a good time. So what needs to be done to change that? Um, hire more, <laughs> hire more uh, diverse um, crew of people, sign more artists, don't sign the same artists over and over again. I mean, I think that there is m very much a construct of, well, this works, so if you just keep pushing the same type of artists, so we see people that fit into a certain type of mold over and over again, with no offense to the people who do their job really well. Um, but there are, there's a plethora, like there's a wide range of, of of artists who are playing in bars and who deserve a little more spotlight. Melissa, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. We're going to uh, say goodbye, but what we're going to do is uh, get Melissa to perform another song from her latest album. And so until our next show, bye for now. In my sleep, couldn't breathe. I grew gills, I grew in deep, I grew in deep. Before